I just was, you know, it like came up inside me and I was like, this place needs to be rocking on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We need your help. This is what you guys want. This is what I've heard from you for, for all my years being here. And this is what we want to bring to you. And this is the time. And so if you're even hesitant at all, come out now because we feed off of the energy that you guys bring. Is it OMG, Grimace? <laughs> Or just a good player. You know, I think it's OMG. It's good team chemistry. Yeah, it gets something to rally the guys around. And we didn't really have like a home run thing until this OMG came around. And then we got Grimace. Yeah, we got the Grimace here. It's, it's awesome. And this is great for the fans to be able to rally around. I've loved, you know, the people wearing the costumes out, uh, you know, in the stadium. And it's been fantastic. This team yeah. has had a lot of really cool storylines. Special Digit made the conversation with Brandon Nimmo. I think I knew Brandon when you were eight or nine. <laughs> I know, it feels I, like so it. So my best memory in, two th in 2011, we had just drafted you. Yep. We do a press conference from the from the bus I was on. Just as we were about to go off, you said, could you hold on a second? I want to say something. You probably don't remember that. <laughs> you, you thanked your writers for being so kind. I said, what is, it, what is this guy going to possibly say oh my to end the conversation? But that's, it's been great. I've been you know, so happy for Cure. You're 31 years old. Now. I know. I it's know. It's crazy. It's unbelievable. It seems, it seems like only yesterday. But uh, when you look back on it, and so many years have passed, um, it's just shows you how how fast life goes. You it, know, it, it's crazy. But let me tell you, you know, I'm proud of. We used to have the press seminars, good and bad times. You had a great year. You were know, doing well. But even when things weren't going well, pick up the TV. You're out in front of your locker. Yeah. It's yeah, amazing. yeah. I remember. I remember we used to do those at the beginning of right. every spring training, and we used to have like the examples of like the right. good and the bad. And Granderson would run that. Sometimes right. David Wright would run right. it. Sometimes right. and. Um, and you know, I, I I always tried to pride myself on you know whatever the situation was to. Um, the best way to address it was to address it head on and, and be, you know, accountable. After you had a three run home the other night with a big win, you did the interview on the field with Steve Galbs, you and come upon yourself to encourage the fans to come yeah. out and see us play. Yeah. What made you do that? You know, I, I just think we feed off of the energy of the fans and we want you know this is this is what we hear from the Mets fans when we go and interact right. with them you know I right. go to the to the events and they're like you know they tell me about the 69 Mets and the right. 86 Mets and just like where they were and you know and, and everything and and they're like yeah we just and we want to bring no, another one back and we want the playoffs and everything and and so I just was you know it like came up inside me and I was like this is what you guys want this is what I've heard 100%. from you for, for all my years being here. And this is what we want to bring to you. And this is the time. And so if you're, if you're even hesitant at all, come out now because we feed off of the energy that you guys bring. And I'm, I've been in packed stadiums, you know, at Wrigley and Philadelphia. It does and like, make a difference. And it makes a huge yeah, difference, yeah. you know. Especially Philadelphia and, to get to work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so I wanted uh, us as a whole Mets system and Mets support uh, fans and everything that – I wanted us to to be able to enjoy this together and then, you know, help us because we we feed off yeah, of that well, energy. It made a difference the other night. Yeah, you know, and it, it makes it, a huge difference. Yeah. So uh, the fans, they don't know how important it is to come and fill up no. the stadium and, and bring that energy because we feed off of it and it, it makes us play better and it also makes no. the atmosphere just that much better and, and that much tougher for the uh, visiting opponent coming in too. You, you played with the last couple. You played with, with, with Grandy, with Jay Bruce. Um, Sethmas, not so much. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. And David, did they? What, what did the beat around those kind of guys mean yeah. to you? And, you know, it, it was it was awesome to be around, like you said, like David and uh, and Jay um, and David. They they like and Curtis. They really they tried to become like mentors for me. Right, and that's not something that like they had to do. It's something that they kind of. Um, took on their own, you know, responsibility, and they said, you know what, like, let me let me try and help out this next guy who's who's coming mm -hmm. up, and um, and so Jay and David and and uh, and uh, Grandy really really kind of took me under under their wing and showed me the ropes. Um, you know, they they showed me one not just how to be a big leaguer on the field, but how to be a big leaguer off the field, um, how to conduct yourself, and then 
they gave me a great example of how to treat um, the young kids as they were coming up right. because they said, believe it or not, you're going to be in our in our shoes one day. And you are now, and I am now. You are and, now, and uh, and and then you know you're going to need to to pass this on to the next generation and and try and leave it better than than you had it. So it, it, is it hard to you know you know like David used to be in front, David didn't like to be from his locker when he did well. Yeah, he he wanted to take one for the team. Mm-hmm. When he, I mean, is that how you approach it? Did, did you you know? I remember before this current streak, you were. We got to turn it around. You, you didn't hide. Yeah, and I was really so proud of the way you conducted yourself. And that's well, it, it, it makes I appreciate it better. It. You know, when things go better, the, the writers treat you better. Well, yeah, and I and I and I always uh, thought that it's it's easy to be in front of your locker and to answer the questions when uh, when things are going well. But it it takes a pretty big character and and you know a real leader to step up when things are not going well. And to own up to it, um, and to be able to, you know, talk and give the reasoning behind it, um, and kind of just how you're actually feeling, right. even when you know I went up there and said, "Listen, I feel terrible right now, but um, I'm still gonna go and I'm still gonna go fight every single day." But I do take a lot of pride in that, and and so did David, and 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 so did Curtis and Jay, and and it's something that um, you know I think is passed along that. Okay, hey, when your time comes, this is what this is what you're gonna have to do, and this is what good leaders and this is what um, good big leaders do is they're accountable because baseball is not gonna go your way all the time. And even you know, David was big in charity work, and you're involved heavily mm-hmm. in charity work now. Is that something both you picked up from them too? Or? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I definitely think that the the charity work and um, you know, kind of my morals on that were those started way back when I was when I was younger. Um, you know, my parents instilled that in me. Um, and it was something that, um, you know, we were really big in, in our family on, um, our, our faith and, uh, going to church and, um, and, and our relationship with God. And, and part of your relationship with God is understanding that you're not the most important person in the world and, uh, that everyone else is just as important as you are. And so, with wherever you're at, you should use that platform in order to help others. And so, um, you know, for me, we use that basis to go and try and, and spread some good and do whatever we can from this platform to be able to help others and to be able to, um, you know, like the other day we went to the children's hospital and it's amazing how just spending, you know, five, 10 minutes with someone um, in that kind of situation where, you know, if I was to put myself in that situation, I mean, it would just seem like the world is crashing down on you. And yet um, these kids all had smiles. We laughed right. together. We told stories and just a little bit of interaction and it brightens up the day. And so just understanding that, you know, from where you're at, you can make a big difference in other people's lives um, has been a big, uh, a big reason as to how why we've been trying to be active and in the community. And you and your wife, Chelsea, are expecting an addition to the family? Yes, so yeah. So we're expecting in December, yeah, a little baby girl. And, and we're excited about that and uh, passing it on to the next generation and, um, you know, hopefully trying to instill uh, similar values into, into their lives and an, an appreciation for where we're at, but an appreciation for, um, you know, everyone else and, and, and where people are at, at, in their lives and meeting them in, in their spot. So um, we're very excited about it. We are, you know, we're, we're the first to tell you we, we don't have any clue what we're getting into, um, but people do it every day and we're going to we're going to give it our best effort. <laughs> but, but you know what's remarked about it? Come a young from Cheyenne, Wyoming, yep. not exactly the big city. No. But you you've embraced New York. You, you yes. Got, I, you, st- you got a home in St. Lucie, right? Yes, we and have you, a same home in St. Lucie. And you basically moved to New York, right? You yes, remember we did. When I first met you, you would go back and forth. Yeah, that's right. But and, and you go to Broadway shows occasionally. Yeah, think? we did. So we. Did you yes. think it possible, young guy? From I Chip? I know. It just seems it's it's such like a a movie, you know, storybook like kind of type of story and. Um, I, you know, coming from 60,000 60, is the biggest city 
Wyoming. In, in Wyoming. Um, and then, you know, my first experience was Brooklyn, actually, in right. 2012. Do you have any hot dogs with you? Did you eat a lot of Nathan's You know what? I, I had a few hot dogs. Uh, you got to have one on July uh, 4th, well, right? I mean, jelly apple fries. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. But, um, but I just remember, like, the subway rides and getting yeah. used to, you know, like, um, just, like, not as much vegetation and, like, yeah. not, not being able to see as far and just feeling a little more crowded and a little more congested and, uh, you know, more concrete and just the buildings all around you and it was just it was a big adjustment but it helped me for when I got to uh the big leagues in yeah. 2016 that I had already experienced that a little bit and uh we actually ended up living in 2017 and 2018 in the off seasons we we just stayed in Long Island City uh, and it was awesome because you know we did we kind of did like the win in Rome kind of deal where we we tried to go and do as many Broadway shows yeah. as we could. We tried to go and and you know do the restaurants. We tried to go and and you know see some people would invite us to uh, you know get-togethers and and to like events you know and and we we were like yeah let's go do all that because but you know really all in yeah we were yeah. like we're, when when is there another time in our life that we're gonna yeah, get to do to, this and yeah. so we did that and we we lived in Long Island City until uh, twenty twenty two yeah until the end of the 2022 season and um and now we've kind of moved out to the island you know done the old uh, the typical, yeah, yeah the typical yeah. just kind of go out to the suburbs <laughs> kind of deal but you know as we're getting ready to start a family and and we we love it out there right now too it's it's awesome but yeah we definitely did the kind of win in rome deal and we enjoyed our time in new york yeah. and we've really tried to embrace it giant in new york City. yeah i know think? who would have thought who, right who but it's really it's opened my it's broadened my horizons and opened my eyes and uh to being able to enjoy so many other things that that i wasn't sure i would ever get to experience and um so we've we've really enjoyed our time here and tried to just embrace it and you know be be New Yorkers and we we've tried to do our do our best at so it. So this year, Brendan, I know you're not crazy about your average, but you're a career high in RBI. Yep. Career high in walks. Yep. Over 20 home runs, third straight in the year. Yep. So I mean, second straight year. Second, yeah, second. yeah, yeah. The other uh, one, the one that was like sixteen, I think, the year before that in twenty two. But, but but what as we sit now in it, you know. You had a lot of changes in your, you know, mm -hmm. center field, left field, mm -hmm. batting first, third, all mm -hmm. over. You adjusted well, having moaned and groaned about it, yeah. you know, and you yeah. know, and was. I'm sure it wasn't easy, easy, but you you accepted what you had yeah. to do. To you know, I, when I look at this year, um, I I look at it as so the first half was probably the best first half I've ever had in my life. Right. It was it was unbelievable, and that's even with being for the first seven weeks i think i was the like most unlucky with expected slugging percentage right. i was like one of the top guys with expected slugging percentage had the biggest difference um between my actual and my expected um and i still had the best uh right. first half that, I, that i've ever had um and then the second half was disappointing no doubt um you know i i've definitely struggled um but it's no different than you know than any other year where you have these times that you go through in baseball where for some reason you just can't seem to to quite right. turn the corner and figure it out it went on longer than i than i would have liked but uh i think that what we've learned through that is there's a few biomechanical things and all of that but just to continue to be yourself and take your shots um and don't you know don't try and change things too much because you know when things work they they, they tend to they tend to come back around and work One in baseball game, maybe i've screwed up the details you were hurt the game before you came in late mm -hmm. and the ninth inning and the game winning home run yes. against the braves yes that is correct yeah. so yeah the day before i kind of tweaked my oblique uh with against freed and uh um, you know, I felt it a little bit and, you know, just from the experience and with our training staff and everything, I knew that if we could get that taken care of, that I could probably, I could probably try and come back, at, you know, maybe tomorrow, if not the next day. And we, we're, we're always trying to minimize things as much as we can right. here as like, you don't want things to turn into two weeks. You want them to be one day or two days. And, and so, you know, we, we ended up coming out of that game and 
then I didn't start the next day, right. but I said, hey, I feel pretty good. So like, you know, if you need me later on, and I ended up coming in and pinch hitting off of Minter and uh, and ended up hitting a walk off home run that off of pretty, him. And I was it was Sunday night baseball. Yeah, yeah it was. It was on Mother's, Mother's Day. Uh, Day. Yeah, and it was it was such a cool experience and uh, just a, another you know another example of overcoming adversity and um, you know and being able to just see the growth uh, in 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 the player that I've become uh, you know to this point because. Uh, you know, I just, I, you know, Minter is a really, really good yeah. left on left matchup. And uh, I was very, very proud of that because, um, you know, that's that's someone where you're coming up in a big situation. You come through big for your team um, and you want to do that when you're when you're one of the leaders on the team. So it's uh, it was a really cool experience. Let me for go me. back to the beginning. The Mets draft your 13th, if mm -hmm. I correctly. 13th overall, 13th overall, 14th, the late Jose Fernandez. Jose Fernandez. And, uh, poor guy. Bro. Yes. How how tough was it to you to hear for a couple? Of oh years yeah. That more Met, than a couple. Met, Met, and yeah. one one unnamed Mets executive. One name his name had a quote. Uh, what do we need Stanton for? We got Nimmo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember that oh one? Oh my gosh. You, you remember yeah, that one? I don't, yeah, I know but that. But you persevered. Yeah, I persevered. I persevered. You know, and, and it's uh, it's one of those things where I think if everyone knew every major league team what jose fernandez was going to turn into yeah. they they would have drafted him number right. one overall right uh um, he, he was high school baseball yeah i know and i yeah and 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 it was one of those things that um hearing it, it it was it was a good learning opportunity for me because you're always going to be compared to other people right. in this game um and you know people hate that you say this but you just you can't care like it, you, yeah. you really can't care what what other people think. Right. You have to be okay with with what you're doing and how you think noise. about yourself. And you do. You have to you have to turn off the noise, right. uh, especially here in New York City. Right. Um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of outside noise, and uh, it can get to you if you if you let it. But um, one of the things that I had to learn really early on was to. Uh, kind of let that I was definitely a people pleaser when right. I you know when I showed up and uh, I had to kind of turn into one of those people that just doesn't doesn't care what what, what they have to say you know and and that's just that kind of tough like outer skin that you have to have here it in New York City the fighting time yeah 100 yeah. percent I mean I was you know I came like you said like didn't have high school baseball so it was a big jump for me um, but it was just from that more consistency level of playing um, these type of pitch day after day you know time after time uh, we were used to starters being good but you know then the reliever coming in and having just as good or better stuff was new you know to me and uh, you know it took some time as a hitter to be able to adjust to it um, and and th th on the other end of it Jose has immediate success you know yeah. un major league Rookie stuff the, uh, right out right of the, the gate young. and uh, you know he was an unbelievable yeah. pitcher and would probably still be an unbelievable yeah, yeah, pitcher yeah. you know but um you know i like i said it was a good lesson for me because it was something that i was going to need to learn regardless so might as well get it out of the so way at the beginning multiple choice what makes this team tip 22 and 33 on the precipice knock on wood not to jinx again the player mm -hmm. is it omg grimace max <laughs> wiener or just or just good vibe. They're just good players. You know, I think it's OMG. I, I you know, we the thing is, we didn't even know about Grimace until like yeah. I, I think it was like ten games into it, and Gelb's like, he was like, hey, I'm gonna ask you a tough question, and uh, I was like, oh yeah, and he's like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you about Grimace, and I'm like, who is Grimace? <laughs> what like what you know? Yeah. And so uh, I had no clue about it. It's great. I'm glad that the fans have rallied yeah. around it. But as far as this team goes. We really did rally around uh, Jose Iglesias yeah. and this OMG thing, and it's been. From I mean, before I loved it. When two thousand, when we won, we had the Doors, uh, uh, L.A. Woman. Oh right? yeah, that was the same song. And yeah, you know, that means it brings the guys together. And exactly, it, 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 it's a, it's good in the locker room. Yeah, it's good team chemistry. Yeah, it gets something to rally the guys around. And we didn't really have like a home run thing until. Uh, until you know this OMG came around, and then we did the OMG yeah, sign, great. and you know they sent us it. And, and a great yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, this was it was awesome, you know. Great. And um, you know we, we looks we all signed it there. But this this is just like 
you know, this was so organic. Yeah. And I think that's, that's the better, best, much better. That's the best way for much it to better. happen is when, you know, when these things are, are organic yeah. like this and you don't have to force it. Yeah. Um, that's when, that's when it's the best. And that's when guys rally around yeah. it the most. Yeah. And as far as I Iggy goes, he's been unbelievable for us as a player. And but two hits a night. Too. Yeah, I know. That doesn't it's, help. It's incredible. <laughs> but then, you know, as a, as a person and yeah. as, you know, like, uh, you know, creative, uh, you know, creating these songs and creating you know he's he's working on another yeah. one too so yeah, uh you know so kind of throw that out there but like him as a person he's been absolutely amazing yeah, and he's... such a great addition for us yeah. and uh, i just i think this has been you know what we've rallied around the well, most that's great this and then we got grimace. This grimace. Yeah, we got the grimace yeah. here. I know. And then they got the purple seat, and we've done yeah. we've we've done four and an oh since yeah. the purple seat. Play, so play. that's play. I mean, you know, it's it's awesome. And this is great for the fans to be able to rally it's, around. Yeah. I've loved, you know, the people wearing the costumes out uh yeah. in, you know in yeah. the stadium. And uh, you know, it's been it's been fantastic. This yeah. team has had a lot of really cool storylines. Um, you know what I like to do we do I follow you we Every time I catch a ball, I always throw the ball back at it, somebody in the seats. You know, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, like I do, and I, I I enjoy that. You know, like I I caught a ball when I was in uh, Coors Field yeah. when I grew up, yeah. and I, I caught a ball from a bullpen catcher, and it just made my day. And I just thought it was like the coolest great, great thing, city. you know. And so for me, like yeah, tossing the ball up there it's and giving city. him a chance, you know, and usually I, trying to find some kid to throw it to or something it's, like it's, that. It's, it's fun. Let me see this. I admire what you've done on the field, but. You probably even wear the way you conducted yourself. You do the right thing. You stand up for your teammates. You're there. Good times and bad times. And that's the charity work. So best of luck to you and Chelsea. Thank you so much, yeah, Jay. I guys. appreciate so it. Hopefully we go all the way this year. Anything for you. Thank and you yes, I, I, I hope we do too. And, yeah. uh, you know, we're gonna, we're playing well right now. Yeah. And we're going to give it our best time. effort. You know, it's an exciting time. Very, and, uh, very exciting. Yeah, keep it going. Like the vibes. Thank you, Jay. Appreciate your time. Okay, thanks for having me. Will do. Will okay. do.